severe power outages in the capital, the government's premier PSUs fighting for their share, merchant power prices going through the roof, all because India has enough coal but simply can't get it to its power plants. That's not all. The government is having to turn away customers for the Krishna Godavari Basin Gas, once touted as the solution to India's fuel shortage. Thousands of megawatt of power capacity hangs in the balance, waiting to be brought on stream. What's the way out? Bloomberg UTV's Mini Menon caught up with Reliance Power CEO JP Chalsani and began by asking him to assess the impact of the domestic coal shortage on the power sector. Power sector is, is a little more complex sector than what most people think of it. It's a fascinating sector, but at the same time, it's a little complex sector on this. The sectoral issues keep cropping up from time to time. We have been having these issues from time to time and we've been resolving them. Currently, yes, there are a set of issues which are being faced, especially in the last, if you look at last six to nine months, there's new issues that have cropped up. One is the shortage of fuel on this. The domestic coal is uh, in shortage and you have the gas is an issue on this and imported coal prices have gone up and obviously we don't have a nuclear fuel. So therefore the fuel shortage, the fuel related issues, whether it's quantity or the quality of the pricing became a major issue in the last few months. Mm. Now let's talk about the cost of fuel. What's happening on the coal front? I mean there, there's shortage, there, most companies, power companies are not getting access to coal. Coal India says that there isn't enough coal this year, it's far short of uh, what it had projected earlier and imported coal is getting expensive. What is, what is the out point to this kind of a crisis? Is this going to get worse? If you see in the last four years, or including this year, what's going to happen, maybe we are not close to the target what we fixed for the 11th plan period for the capacity addition. But if you look at the, compare with the previous history, the capacity addition has been much yeah. uh, form, more formidable than it was earlier on this. So you have much larger capacity coming on stream on this. Uh, predominantly, most of it is coal-based capacity which has come in this country on this. So therefore you have a larger capacity coming in on this. At the same time the growth rate in the coal capacity, coal production capacity has not gone up commensurate with the uh, power capacity on this. So your shortage has started increasing domestically on this. Then in between you also had set of issues of the new coal mines coming up and their environmental set of issues on this. All this coupled together you have a shortage of the coal. Today in fact the, uh, the system is that they're saying that if the capacity which are commissioned post-2009, we can't assure you a quantity of coal more than 50% of your requirement. So there are a huge set of issues of the domestic coal. So what happens then? If, if you can get only 50% of the coal internally, will you have to import? I mean, will, will the industry have to import coal? At what prices will they import? Does that mean that uh, the price of power will go up substantially on the merchant side or that there could be a lot of uh, financial stress for the companies that have set up these power plants because they would have done the math somewhere down the line on the basis of a certain uh, you know cost of coal if you don't have an enough the coal coming from the domestic sources especially where you have you placed your power plant uh, your whole economics you worked off your power plant thinking that you have a coal linkage you're going to have a coal supply coming from the coal india if, you, if there's a shortage the either you underrun your capacity and if you underrun your capacity, obviously you're not going to recover your full cost, your full fixed cost. So therefore, there's a problem on this. Or you, sub you increase your availability of fuel by importing fuel. Importing fuel has two factors of this. Most of these projects which are based on the coal linkage are interland projects, which they are not at coastal locations. They're closer to the coal mines or closer to the load centers on this. One is imported coal prices have substantially gone up in the last uh, the couple of years. And you also have a huge amount of domestic transportation after it comes to the coastal location. So landed cost of imported coal at these interland plants is substantially higher. Even if you have a 70, 30, 80, 20 sort of a blending because you can't completely replace the domestic coal with uh, imported coal because of the restrictions in terms of the calorific value, in terms of the moisture content on this, the blended cost of fuel is, is, is goes up on this and your cost of power goes up. So therefore the cost of power goes up again, it gets linked with your tariff elasticity. Do you have or don't you have on this? Let me ask you, in the UMPPs, the ultra mega power uh, projects that you also uh, have a lot of interest in, uh, the projects which are based on imported coal, there's already a problem. You know, there is no secret that Tata Power and all of you have gone to the government saying that we need to renegotiate prices. Mundra is coming up. Uh, you have, of course, uh, Krishna Patnam, which is going to come up later on. How do you see it panning out for the UMPPs? Because over here, the money is uh, 
to the you know tune of huge amounts. It's far far bigger than anything else uh, in the power sector. Yeah, uh, as far as we are concerned, we have three ultra mega power projects. Mm -hmm. uh, the two of them are based on captive coal, both Sasan and Tilaya. So therefore, the there is an assurance of quality, quantity, and pricing of the coal on this. So therefore, these two projects are completely insulated from the point of view of the fuel availability as well as fuel price risk on this. Completely insulated from the risk point of view. The only other project, only the third UMPP, which is the Krishna Patna UMPP, as I rightly said, is based on imported coal. In fact, that's the only imported coal-based plants in our entire portfolio of 30, 35,000 megawatts on this. This is exactly like Mandra or many other imported coal-based plants in this country on this, which was designed right from the beginning based on imported coal on this. There, most of the developers were actually planning to import coal from Indonesia. That's, that's being the major uh, the country of export on this. There have been certain change in regulations in, uh, in Indonesian, uh, by the Indonesian government on this. So that has put an additional burden on the pricing of the coal. So because of that, the whole economics of these power products are getting changed. This is something happened because of the change in regulations in government of Indonesia. This is not a project specific issue. Okay. This is not Krishna Patnam or Mundra specific issue. This is an issue for all coal based, imported coal based plants. And also this is an issue to the extent of every domestic coal based plants because you are you're, uh, blending the imported coal with the domestic coal on this. But w what happens uh, uh, to the e economics of the power companies right now as things stand because it's such a sensitive topic and we are going to go into elections in 2014. Uh, there are lots of state elections in the run-up. Do you see the government actually coming in and saying that we will increase uh, tariffs? No, in fact, uh, the, the, the Government of India, Minister of Power has been on record, Planning Commission has been saying that retail tariffs need to go up year after year based on the, the increase in input costs. My personal view is that whenever there is an increase in input cost, obviously you need to have an, uh, the corresponding increase in the retail tariffs. But having said that, I think uh, if you look at our distribution system today, you need to have a two-pronged approach on this. One is that the to allow the increase in cost, and also at the same time to contain the retail tariffs to some extent, bring in more and more efficiencies in terms of uh, your T&D loss reduction on this. It has to be a combined effect of passing on the increased cost at the same time to some extent dampening that by improving your efficiencies on this. But I have a related question. You know, the same thing is happening in the oil and gas sector. And over there, you've had partial deregulation. In power, the tariffs have not been you know, looked at uh, in, a, in a free market kind of a way because of the fact that it is so sensitive. If it doesn't happen for some reason, what do you see the government doing? Will it have bonds? Will it have some way of, you know, covering the subsidy? I don't know. How, how does it work? No, no. The, what normally the system in this country is that you have a regulation, regulators, yeah. regulatory commission in each of the states. The job of the regulatory commission is to balance the revenue requirement of a distribution utility. So they take what is the cost, approved cost of this, and then they look at the, the, the tariff fixation so that you recover your cost with reasonable returns on this. So if that exercise is done properly, then obviously there is nothing like a gap. So, but what happens is that when you want to balance these two, sometimes the tariff hikes required are substantial. So many of the, uh, the uh, sometimes regulatory commissions, many regulatory commissions, what they intend to do is that either they suppress the cost portion or they create a regulatory asset, mm -hmm. saying it will recover in the future. So therefore, that's, that's the type of uh, the, the balancing act what many of the regulatory commissions are trying to do this. That's what, over a period of time, having done that, this is what we got into this problem. If we, we had a progressive increase in the retail tariffs, coupled with the progressive in improvement in the efficiencies, I don't think we would have talked today about the type of tariff increase what is required. It's because we didn't do it over a period of time. Then there are a number of states where the tariff increase has not happened for years together on this. It should be a regular phenomenon of sure. this. Do you expect a shakeout in the power sector, given the kind of you know cross currents and tailwinds and headwinds that the industry is facing? I think the more than the M and A, first thing is even if you have an M and A sort of thing, is power sector needs the fuel. Yeah. Okay. M and A is not really going to help you in terms of the fuel availability. Okay. And the, even if after the m and there is the, your tariffs remain the same on this. How do you actually ensure that these tariffs are passed on? So those set of issues are not going to get resolved by m and but only m and might happen because some of the projects which took off halfway through, left out, and they don't want to complete might happen on this. But I don't see immediately something of that nature happening, but maybe as you move forward in a few years, it might on this. But today I think the m and is not going to solve the problem. 2014 is the year of ramp up of the gas production, which is what is being talked about today. I think once that happens on this, and then the, again the capacity based on the gas based plants will come up on this.